What's the hardest part of being a mom? I'll tell you what's the hardest part of being a mom. Do you want more children in the future? Don't get me started on this question. Real talk, do you ever have to just step away and have a good cry alone or is it just me? You know when it's just one of those days where you just don't feel cute, like your hair is not cooperating? We just clip it back, a little half up, half down. Let me try it. Okay guys, I just popped in a little claw clip. It looks a little better. Still not my favorite hair day ever, but we're gonna go ahead and continue with this video. So hi guys, welcome back to my channel. But if you're new here, welcome. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below for more videos. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, this video is gonna be Mother's Day related. So I asked you guys over on my Instagram to ask me some questions and you guys sent over some really good questions. So before we get into that, I just wanna give a huge shout out to Shein for partnering with me for today's video. So I have a little haul for you guys with some pieces that I recently got from them. And guys, they have amazing pieces for this Mother's Day and they also have a really cute kids clothes as well. So they have a bunch of outfits for to match with your little ones they also have great gift ideas on there for any mother figure in your life and the best part is you guys can use my code to get 15% off the entire Shein site by using my code 15 Nas I'll put it on the screen right here as well as in the description box down below and you guys could get some money off so with that being said let's get into this haul Here's the first item I have to show you guys from Shein. Guys, I am so obsessed with this. I'm actually wearing this in my new Instagram picture with Vaughn, but this is probably my favorite dress from the whole haul. So we have this nude long maxi dress with these super cute cutouts, and then it just ties right here. I will say I should have probably sized up just for the bust region, but other than that, it fits me amazing. Here's what the back looks like. We have a super cute cutout. I got this dress in a size medium and this is just gonna be so perfect for the summer. It also has a slit on both sides. So even on that side and this other side right here. This also has to be one of my favorite items from the haul. I love, you guys know I'm obsessed with brown. Anything brown is my favorite automatically. But we have this gorgeous nude detailing all along it with this like ring right here. And it just ties in the back, but it just ties right there. It's such a pretty romantic dress. I could totally see myself wearing this to lunch on the beach or anything like that. It's the perfect dress for the summer. Guys, this dress is so so pretty it's so feminine and girly i'm in love with the halter neckline especially because it's adjustable so you can tie it as tight as you want or loose as you want so it kind of gives you a lift here is what the back looks like again it's just so pretty and dainty and feminine here's a full body look guys this set right here is so perfect for summer so this is just like a top and skirt situation but i'm so in love with the color it's also a stretchy material but guys how beautiful is this with some cute sandals or heels if you're going out but yeah you guys can see you just tie it at the top right here and then we also have this ruching detail here is a look of the back and i got this one in a size medium as well next up we have this gorgeous blue striped dress i could totally see myself wearing this by the beach or on the beach but it is just so cute, you guys. I love how it has this kind of like tie detailing. By the way, whenever I get anything of a knit material like this, I always size down. Just because this type of fabric, it does stretch out. So I like it to, you know, hold everything up. As you guys can see, it's holding up the girls and all of that. I think I got this in a small, to be honest. So yeah, you guys can see it has a ton of stretch because I usually wear a large or even a medium, but I got a small in this one. I have two items to show you guys right here, but I wouldn't necessarily wear them together, if that makes sense. But I have this black long sleeve zip, and I love it, you guys. This is something I wear all the time. Something like this with a good pair of sweatpants, cargo pants, it's just such an easy thing to wear. Like literally this is something that I just throw on. You guys know a black shirt, any type of black shirt is like my daily uniform. So yeah, I love this one so much. I got it in a size medium and it zips all the way down. Then I got these parachute pants and mind you for pants, I usually always order a size large, but after reading the reviews, a lot of people said to size down. So I got a size medium. They're nice and long enough for me. I'm 5'7 by the way. Here's what the back looks like. We got some pockets on the booty. But yeah, they're super flattering and really cute cute and for the summer i'd love to just wear these types of pants with like a bikini top like a white bikini top would be so cute i just threw on this white tank top to show you guys a few jackets that i got 
Guys, this one is by far one of my favorite jackets I've ever gotten from Shein. So I've been needing more just like crop jackets. I love wearing a jacket, but sometimes I hate when it's like longer. It kind of makes you look a little frumpy, you know what I mean? If it like hides your waist. So this one just hits at the perfect spot. So it still shows off your waist. You still get that coverage of a jacket, but it still adds to the outfit and it doesn't take away. Like you guys can see it hits at the perfect spot, still shows off the waist, but I am in love with it, you guys. It's like a cargo jacket, if that makes sense. But yeah, I love this one. I'm so sad. I love this jacket, but as you guys can see, it is way too small. But I still wanted to show you guys because it's super cute. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it's too small. I need to see what size I got in it. Keep in mind, this has absolutely no stretch. So I probably should have gotten a large. I think I got a medium in this. Um, just because that other jacket I got a medium too so I didn't want it to be too baggy but this one I could have definitely done a large or extra large but it's still so cute last thing I'm gonna show you guys for this haul is a bikini and a cover-up and guys Shein is the place to be for your bathing suits this summer and cute cover-ups they have so many options so this right here is this khaki green um with new detailing it came in a few different colors but I am just loving this color right here and the wood little circles and detailing is such a nice touch and then this is just a little crop top so I can totally see myself wearing this over my bathing suit with like a pair of cargos or something like that but yeah you guys will probably see this look somewhere on Instagram because I definitely want to shoot in it maybe even wear a belly chain or something like that you guys let me tell you I filmed that haul a couple days ago but y'all I started to get the chills while I was filming that haul, especially because I was in like those dresses and stuff. I'm like, why am I so cold? Like, what is going on? Like, I would literally wrap myself in a robe in between my outfits. And then after I finished filming that, I took my temperature. Bro, I had like a 101 degree fever. Like, it was not a joke. I have been sick for the past few days. I just recently started feeling better. But guys, I've been going through it. I have been going through it. I'll do a whole update video for you guys. Being sick this past few days has just been like the icing on the cake. The literal cherry on top. But with that being said, I swear the only thing that makes me feel better is talking to you guys. I swear just turning on the camera and just talking to you guys, interacting with you guys in the comments, on Instagram and stuff, it genuinely makes me feel a lot better. So I'm like, you know what? Let me still film this video and get it up for you guys because again, I just love talking to you guys. So with that being said, let's get into the Q&A questions. So, you know what? This is the perfect question to start out with. Real talk. Do you ever have to just step away and have a good cry alone or is it just me? All the time. All the time. And trust me, there's a lot of moms that feel the exact same way. And sometimes us just crying and releasing our emotions is the only way to get through the day. <laughs> but I think the beauty of social media and especially the emergence of short format content and more people creating content i think we can see more lives and i think a lot of moms do a really good job at showing the truth behind motherhood it's not all peaches and cream it's not all rainbows and butterflies it definitely has its hardships as well and again i just think with social media i think we can see that a lot more and a lot of moms are now speaking up about their mental health which i think is also very important and i think we all just grew up with a generation of moms if you're around my age, I think all of us grew up with a generation of moms that did a lot. You know, a lot of us had moms that would work as well as take care of the house and the kids as well on top of it. And we didn't really see them complain, you know? And my mom included, my mom did so much. And looking back on it now as a wife myself and a mother myself, I'm always like, mom, how did you, how did you get through all that? And I think it's important to note that our moms grew up in an era where mental health wasn't really discussed. It wasn't really taken that serious. We didn't really hear about postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety and postpartum rage. Those things just weren't a thing. You know, women were just supposed to shut up and eat their food and take it. Our generation is doing a very good job of ending that cycle and how important it is for women to have a support system. And even now in doctor's offices, we're getting asked about our postpartum health. Again, I don't think it's perfect, don't get me wrong, but I do think it is now a topic of discussion. And now me as a mother raising two sons, I'm gonna make sure that they know the hardships that women go through. I think a lot of mothers from the older generation did their sons, specifically their sons, a disservice for not showing them their emotions, you know, because a lot of 
men in our generation, they grew up seeing their moms doing everything and their moms never complained. Their moms shut the door and cried in the closet and they didn't know what their mom was going through. So now they grow up and they think that's the norm. But no, I'm gonna let my sons know about postpartum depression. Obviously when they're older, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, they're gonna know what women go through. Our hormones are completely different than men. So I think it's really unfair that we're expected to go throughout our days like men. We do not have the same hormone cycle. We do not have the same energy levels. And I think all of that is very important for us to teach the younger generation. So I think I went off on a tangent with that question. I do that with every question. That's why my Q and A's, I always have to make sure I'm in a good headspace to film it because I will sit there and talk for hours. So to circle back to your question, yes, I do have a good cry often and it's very much needed. And it's so important for us not to bottle up our emotions. I think that's a perfect opportunity to talk to our kids about mental health and how to navigate emotions and to raise emotionally intelligent children. Do you want more children in the future? Don't get me started on this question. Do not get me started, okay? So if you guys didn't know, we were always in between having two to three kids. So when we were trying for our second, we were like, you know what, if we get a girl, that's how we know, that's our sign that we should just be done. We have one boy, one girl, we're good. So obviously we ended up with twins and it was the biggest blessing ever because now that I have three, I can't imagine not having three, you know? So I love having three, but now I'm in this weird spot where I feel bad that Arya doesn't have a sister. You guys know I'm very close to my sister. So every time I'm like talking to my sister, and we're like sending each other TikToks and all that. We're just like calling each other and venting to each other. I feel like this sense of guilt that I'm not giving Arya that. But at the same time, she's gonna have cousins. She already has Shadnaz. I hope my sister has a daughter as well. So she's gonna have her cousins. And I have a lot of friends who are super close to their cousins. And they're literally like sisters, you know? So I see that and I'm like, okay, she could have that. I don't know. I don't know. And then also I can't guarantee that I'm going to have a girl next if I do have another child. And four is a crowd, y'all. Four is a crowd. It already is pretty difficult with three. Let me tell you, okay. Having one kid is one thing, but it's very easy to find, let's say, a babysitter for one child. Try to find a babysitter for three kids, let alone four. And then I think about traveling once they're older. I'm like, okay. Now we gotta buy, if we have four kids, that's six plane tickets. What car would we drive with four kids? Like we would need a Sprinter van at this point. And then I think about the schools we wanna send them to. If we wanna send them to private school, that's four kids private school tuition. I don't know, I think about the logistics side, like in a perfect world, I would love to give Arya a sister, but I just think about the logistics side and I'm just like, it's kind of a lot, I don't know. And then to go through another pregnancy, if I could snap my fingers and give Arya a sister, I would, but in the grand scheme of things, it does sound a little bit more difficult. What's your fave part about motherhood? So with this question, it depends on what day you ask me, because if you ask me on a bad day, I'm gonna be like, y'all, it's the worst thing ever. <laughs> Some days are really, really hard, and it's not even the kids that make it hard. It's just like everything that goes into it that just makes some days just so, so hard. But then when you have a good day, it is such an amazing day. It's such a rewarding day. Ultimately, my favorite part about motherhood, my kids are still really young, but now that Kayvon's three, he's been talking a lot more. He's super, it's like we can hold conversations now, which is like amazing. So when Vaughn just looks at me and says like, you're so funny, mommy. I love you, mommy. Your hair looks so nice, mommy. Those, comments like when he just talks to me like that literally just make my life they really do they make me so happy and obviously the babies are too young to talk but just seeing them hit certain milestones or even today i'm not gonna lie i was having a really bad day earlier and i walked past kai taking a nap and he's like laying on his little belly and his cheek is like this and his like lips are puffed out and it literally just brought me this sense of like peace and it almost grounded me in a way it it made me realize that no matter how big my problems are, they really aren't that big. As long as my kids are good, my kids are healthy, I think motherhood really just puts a lot of life into perspective. It makes you realize that all of your shallow little problems 
really aren't that big of a deal you know and again i'm someone who's very dramatic you know i even get that comment sometimes that i complain a lot and you know what i might i will admit i might but that's just me if you have a problem with it i don't know what to tell you but no for real i think motherhood just like really humbled me i think that's the right word to say i think it brought me back to reality and it just taught me this unconditional love there is nothing on this earth my children can do to make me not love them I literally love those kids with every bone in my body. How soon after giving birth did you wear a faha and what was your favorite postpartum compression? So I started wearing, my doctor put like a little compression belt on me like right after I gave birth. But, and I wore that for I would say a good like week after. But after I think two weeks postpartum, I started wearing a full on faha. I'm talking like post BBL faha. And I got some comments because I posted on um, Instagram. Does that not hurt? I didn't find it painful, to be honest. It really didn't hurt for me. Again, listen to your body. I think that's the number one key here. Listen to your body. But I did think the idea of it sounded a lot more daunting. The idea of putting on a faha after I gave birth. I'm like, is it going to hurt? But I didn't find it to hurt, to be honest. So I will link down below the compression garment that I wore, but I wore that religiously for like six weeks after. I think I'm going to start wearing it again, to be honest. I, it just made me feel a lot more put together. And I also just think in America, they don't value compression as much as other countries. Where I'm from, like women are told, wrap your belly, wrap your belly. In America, they don't really tell you that. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. But every other culture, I've seen it in Asian culture. I've seen it in Latin culture women are advised for their health not even for vanity purposes for their health to wear compression so just speak to your personal doctor and do your own research but in my opinion i think it helped my healing a lot and i'll link down below what i wore what's the hardest part of being a mom i'll tell you what's the hardest part of being a mom i think it's society that makes it the hardest and then on top of that for me i also have a platform where i'm constantly being judged left and right so that's just like the icing on the cake but I just think as women in general in this society, and as mothers specifically, it's just, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You need to be an amazing, attentive mom, but you also need to have a life outside of your kids. Oh, but if you have a life outside of your kids, you're also neglecting your kids. And you also need to look perfect after carrying a child for nine months, multiple children, you know, for nine months, but you still need to be perfectly skinny and you need to be pretty and your hair needs to be done you can't look a mess because you can't lose yourself in motherhood um and you need to lose the baby weight asap asap rocky um your house needs to be perfectly clean and you need to cook three square meals a day that are perfectly healthy and organic and your kids need to make sure to eat them um you also need to make sure you're looking good for your man and you need to sleep with him every single night come on give us a break literally you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't so I just think that is the hardest part of motherhood, just finding balance in everything without the external noise telling you that you're doing everything wrong. That's why I preach to you guys, literally, since my how to be a bad bee video from years ago, that's why I've always preached to you guys, just do what makes you happy because someone will always have something to say. As long as you're happy and your kids are happy and your home is happy, who cares what people think? Do what makes you happy. Again, us women, we just get judged and we get shamed left and right. I've never seen so much women shaming until I became a mom myself. I Obviously, I knew women get shamed, but like moms get shamed to a whole nother level. Do you miss going out all the time before you had kids? So I don't really miss the going out part because I still do in a sense. Some people make it seem like I'm out every weekend. Literally, guys, I probably go out like once a month, if we're being honest. I do go to brand events, but that is part of my job. It's networking. Again, it's it's work. So I don't view that as like me going out and like having fun. Even though it does look funny and I'm still like getting ready and all that. But at the end of the day, I'm still technically on the clock. I'm there to, you know, meet brand reps and network and make friends and mingle and, you know, show face to the brand. But regardless, anyways, um, I don't, that's not really what I missed before having kids. Again, even going out is fun, but I, the, the part of going out that's fun for me is going out with my friends. So as long as I'm spending time with my friends, we can spend time here. And 
a lot of my friends, I'm just really lucky that a lot of my friends love my kids just as much as I do. And they have so much fun spending time with my kids as well. Like guys, Danny and Tiba literally slept over here. And Danny took Kayvon to school in the morning and Kayvon literally was on cloud nine. So I just have such amazing friends in my life. So that's never been an issue. What I miss before having kids, I just miss those days. You guys ever just wake up? in the morning and you're like i don't want to do anything i just want to lay in my bed what's that song by bruno mars i just want to lay in my bed like literally that type of vibe and you can actually do it you don't get that anymore when you're a parent it's even if you do have a babysitter for the day you still got stuff to do but see again it's a double-edged sword because even though i miss those days I am a much more productive person now as a mother. And it wasn't until I became a mother that I started to really put myself on a schedule. I started to wake up earlier. I started to get work done a lot more efficiently. So again, even though I miss those days of me being able to like literally do nothing, at the same time, I'm very thankful that motherhood kind of forced me to be a more productive person because look at where it brought me in life. Overall, you guys, I do just want to be very transparent with y'all. I don't want people to watch my videos and think that I'm encouraging you all to get married young and have kids. Even though that's what I'm doing, I don't want to seem like I'm influencing that, if that makes sense. That's the hardest part of being an influencer. It's like everything you do, like with me getting surgery or me getting my nose done and all of that, even though I did it for myself, I'm not trying to encourage other people to do the same thing. So I'm very much an advocate for taking life at your own pace. So don't ever, ever, ever compare yourself to me or anybody else. When I see comments like that, like me and Nas are the same age and she's married and has a business and kids and this, that, and a third. I'm just like, please, 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 please don't compare yourself to me. I have my days just like the rest of y'all. Again, there's no right way to do things. Again, just don't let society pressure you. Don't let social media pressure you. Don't let me pressure you. Literally just take life at your own pace. Everybody has their own divine timing. So don't ever compare your journey to mine. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Again, don't forget to use my code 15 Nas for 15% off the Shein site. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you again for our next one. Bye guys.